Hi, this is Mark Frangillo, the Academic Account Manager at Harvard Law School. In this short video, I will introduce you to the lawschool.thompsonreuters.com portal and give you a quick introduction to searching on Westlaw. First, let's talk about the portal. Lawschool.thompsonreuters.com is a page built for law students. In fact, I would strongly recommend that you bookmark this particular page because from this page, you will see a drop down at the top of the screen listing all of the different Thomson Reuters products that Harvard subscribes to for which you have access to for free. In addition, we offer something called on-demand learning. On-demand learning consists of six different certifications. You can get certified on Westlaw, but on-demand learning serves a secondary purpose. As you are learning about legal research and writing throughout the semester, you might have questions or might want to refresh your memory on some of the concepts that you are learning. Instead of taking the certifications sequentially, you can actually come to on-demand learning and pick and choose which lessons you want to review or watch. For example, secondary sources. If I select secondary sources, you actually have the ability to review three different secondary source lessons. They're bite-sized. None of these are going to be longer than seven minutes in length, but they are a wonderful way for you to really reinforce the concepts that you are learning in, in class. Now back to the portal, a couple of other items that are going to be very helpful for you. Under events and webinars, we offer various national webinars throughout the fall and spring semesters. Feel free to sign up and attend these. These typically are about 25 minutes long. My contact information is further down the screen. And finally, you have links to different product guides and maps uh, that we've made available on this particular page. By far, most of the time that you come here, you're coming here to access Westlaw Precision, which we will do momentarily. But one final tip, you have free access to Black's Law Dictionary. This is going to be very useful for you as you are going through law school. So if, for example, you wanted to get a definition of adverse possession. I could just simply type adverse possession in quotes here, run the search, and Westlaw will return the Black's Law Dictionary definition of, black, of, of adverse possession for me. It's very, very useful. As I said, most of the time from the portal, you're going to simply just click access Westlaw Precision. And when I do that, right now, it takes me to this landing page. This would be the same landing page you would be viewing. And I do want to point out that you will notice across the screen various tabs, precision research, content types, federal materials, state materials. Precision research is something that you will learn when you are researching cases. It really is a very effective way of getting cases that match your specific fact pattern, uh, cause of action, outcome, etc. I do not want you to have this as your landing page though. My recommendation would be that you make content types your landing page. So first thing you should do You'll notice a gear icon on the right hand side here. Click that icon, set content types as your home page so that the next time you come to the Westlaw Precision product, content types will be the tab that is active. All right. 
Why is that important? Well, as you are beginning to research, you don't want to start with cases. Secondary sources really should be your starting point. And when you come to or have content types as your default tab, this really reinforces the fact that secondary sources are a better place to begin. And I'll tell you why momentarily, but there are a number of ways of getting to secondary sources on Westlaw. The first way, now that I have content types as my active tab, would be to simply click on secondary sources here, and then I can drill in by jurisdiction, type, even topic. All right, so if I know that you're going to be researching adverse possession in New York, you could click on secondary sources, select New York, and get a list of all the different secondary sources that are available in New York, quite a few. A shortcut though, if we go back to the content types tab, and this is really what most people do. When they come to Westlaw and are about to run a search, just use the search box at the very top of the screen. One search, right? Well. Step number one, type the issue that you are researching. What are the elements of adverse possession? Step number two, select your jurisdiction. Now you are researching this issue in New York. You will wanna make sure that New York is selected. It is a state only issue. You do not need to include, nor should you include related federal materials. Make sure that Again, New York is selected as your jurisdiction. Final step, you're going to run this search. Now, when you run the search, Westlaw is going to look for the best documents from these different content categories, everything above specialty areas, basically. So you're gonna get the best cases, secondary sources, briefs, etc., that match this particular issue. And we will do that at this point. Once you return a result, Westlaw will display the overview screen. Now the overview is providing you with a number of pieces of information. First and foremost, Westlaw through artificial intelligence has something called Westlaw Answers. That's what we're seeing at the very top of the screen. It's giving us cases that have set the standard for what the elements or what are the elements of adverse possession in New York. The other thing that you get on the overview screen, it's giving us the best document in each of these categories on the left-hand side of the screen. I would recommend that you do not have the overview as your default for the simple fact that the first thing that you will notice on the overview screen are cases. And cases are not a good place to begin when you don't know anything about your issue. You are much better served starting in secondary sources for three reasons. A secondary source is gonna give you background on an issue that you're unfamiliar with, number one. It's going to tell you which of the three branches of government covers your matter. Is your issue governed by cases, statutes, regulations, or a combination of those three? And the third reason that you go to a secondary source any secondary source that you read is going to contain hyperlinks to the primary sources that control. So another thing that you should do to make this more efficient for you when you're researching on your own, set the content types default, not to overview, but to secondary sources. So now when you change that to secondary sources and you run a search 
on Westlaw. The first content type that you will see going forward will be secondary sources. And you will see indeed, we have retrieved quite a few secondary sources. Just under 2,000 secondary sources listed by relevance uh, that discuss the concept of adverse possession. I know that's a little overwhelming. So a couple of shortcuts that you should take. Uh, secondary sources, by the way, when we're talking about them, they exist on a spectrum. You have academic-based secondary sources on one end and practical secondary sources on another end. And we have hybrids in between. Uh, an example of a hybrid secondary source would be American Law Reports. That is a secondary source. The, the American Law Reports are annotations written by attorney experts. And, and what they're going to do is take one issue, expand on it, and give you all of the relevant cases and, if applicable, statutes on point itemized by jurisdictions. This is a resource used by both academic scholars as well as practicing attorneys. But what you will want to do most of the time when looking at secondary sources, you're going to want to filter to your state's secondary sources. So instead of looking at all the national secondary sources, international as well as state-based secondary sources, you will want to use the jurisdiction filter, filter to secondary sources from New York. This is going to give you the ability to get practical, practice-based secondary sources used by attorneys in that state. And you'll see just by reading the titles and blurbs of some of these articles, we got some really good hits on this particular issue. Look at this uh, third document, for example, Elements and Requisites of Adverse Possession Generally from the New York Jurisprudence. That's a practice series. The New York Jurisprudence uh, Practice Guide, if you will. Take a look at that article. Just open it up. And this article, about six pages long, if I read this article, not only do I get the elements of secondary sources in New York, if I hover over the footnotes, I can hyperlink to the cases that describe those elements. If I want, I can highlight this particular passage. Use your left mouse button to highlight. And when you release the left mouse button, you have the ability to highlight or highlight and add a note. We can do that. I'm going to add a note here elements of adverse possession in New York. So on Westlaw, you have the ability to annotate materials as you are researching. And this particular article really does illustrate why secondary sources are so helpful. You're getting background on the issue that you are required to research. It's telling you that this issue looks like it's governed by common law cases, number, number two. And the third reason, well, we can hyperlink, as I said a minute ago, to any of those cases. And by the way, if you don't like hovering over footnotes, they always appear as endnotes at the end of the article. Now, this might be a good article for me to get a hard copy of. How do I get a hard copy of anything on Westlaw? Well, if you look to your browsing bar at the top of the screen, you will see that you have the ability to click on that last icon, email, print, download, send to a Dropbox or Kindle. If you decide to email, print or download or send to your Dropbox or Kindle for that matter, you have the ability to deliver just the document or the document and any notes that you have created. That is up to you. Another helpful tip would be 
When you are using Westlaw, make sure you folder everything. Foldering items is a way for you to stay organized. Now, at this point, if you haven't used Westlaw before, you don't have any folders. I'm going to folder this item, but you'll notice when I click on folders, I have a number of different folders that I can save this particular article to. You're not going to have any folders. You're going to just have your first names research. So what you will want to do, create a new folder. Give it a name. And now when you save that item, that will be in that folder. Okay. One other tip that I wanted to give you today. If you need help researching when you're using Westlaw, scroll to the bottom of the screen and there you will see an 800 number. We have bar admitted reference attorneys. They are available 24 hours a day. You could call them or if you'd rather chat with them, you can use live chat. Live chat does go down overnight. I think it goes down from 1 a.m. Eastern to uh, 8 a.m. Eastern, but you can use live chat to uh, get to the reference attorneys as well. Good luck. Uh, hope to see you on some of the national webinars and or around school. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me.